What's up, guys? This is David, a.k.a. Reverse Long, and today I'm here with Kevin, a.k.a. Criminal, in the Friendly Bear Discord chat. And uh, Kevin's been, you know, watching all the videos and studying up and, like, improving his trading and really good to see. Dedicated person. And uh, so we decided in the Friendly Bear community to do movie reviews, trading movie reviews, and, like, what better way to learn to reinforce trading education and just to get yourself in the you know, keep yourself always, you know, in, in the in the right mind of uh, tr seeking trading knowledge from any source, any anywhere, you know, than to go over trading movies. And uh, this time we're going to go over Dumb Money. Dumb Money just came out uh, and Dumb Money. I'm going to give a brief synopsis over here, Kevin. Uh, so check it out. So and correct me if I'm wrong or if, if with anything. So Dumb Money was based out of the. GameStop, GME, AMC, all that stuff that happened early 2021, I believe. It was like February, March. I remember because I was trading it. I didn't know what was going on. This was like the Wall Street Bets uh, era. Wall Street Bets was a, a, a new thing, phenomenon back then, which all these stocks were squeezing. This is in the middle of the pandemic. Um, I had just come, come back from uh, traveling all over South America during the pandemic. I made my first stake from the pre-market in late 2020, no, mid 2000 to late 2020, I made a little, little nest egg of an issue that changed my life completely. Now I have a, a, a stake to trade with. So I remember this stuff pretty clearly. And then I came back from two months of traveling. It's uh, late January, 2021. And lo and behold, the market is going crazy again, or this is like February. And, um, and I'm like, holy shit, like it's it's back. The market is is back and it's, it's stronger. So um, I noticed that like that GME, AMC, and I wasn't even trading these things, but they had a lot of sympathy plays of like uh, anything gaming related, anything. I don't know. It was just really random. I was trying to figure out what's going on. The first thing I did was I ordered the Wall Street Bets book on Amazon. It's like a hundred page book. It came the next day and I read it immediately. And I was like, I had a like, kind of an idea of what was going on. Okay, there's this Wall Street Bets forum. There's kind of, there's some people that kind of know what they're talking about over there as far as like squeezing. And I didn't even understand what a gamma squeeze was or anything. So I'm over here trying to still figure it out. And then I'm, all I knew was I just got to avoid these, these uh, stocks that are squeezing like that. And I remember I got into SLGG. I probably go over it on some older podcasts. And uh, I got really squeezed in the SLGG. It was a gaming stop stock that uh, they were saying that GameStop was going to buy. So the bankrupt company was going to buy a bank, another bankrupt company. And gaming, ga SLGG did gaming conferences. And this is pandemic. Didn't make any sense. Ryan Cohen was an activist investor in GameStop. And Ryan Cohen tweeted uh, an ice cream cone emoji and a frog emoji and the whole GameStop Wall Street Bets community said, okay, the ice cream cone means that the CEO of SLGG worked at McDonald's and she that's the ice cream cone. And the frog emoji means that Project Frog and Game... I don't know. Anyway, I did another po uh, podcast on that. It was super ridiculous. But this was the time where everything was super ridiculous. And uh, the Dumb Money movie... So this is my, my understanding of the Dumb Money movie. Now in hindsight, because they had like... They showed how like all the CNNs, the Fox News, the CNBCs were like kept reiterating the story about GameStop, about the little guy versus the big guy. The little guy is going to gamma squeeze the big guy. And honestly, I think it's just a, it's a narrative. There was some bigger hands in there that orchestrating this whole thing. And the they were using the media to drive the, the narrative. This media is not real. It's it's the uh, it's it's fake news. It's whatever. It's 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 an orchestrated news. It's not real. The the media is not reporting like oh you know the real stuff. This is all what they were. I don't know if you've seen if you've seen um uh, they have like some some uh, videos on YouTube about like uh this the media is repeating the same line over like like uh, yeah. hundreds hundreds of little yeah. screens. So I, I I think it's all BS. I think there was something bigger going on. However, the movie was entertaining. It was it brought a lot of uh, reminiscences back about like Robin Hood and like when people bought the stock, you see the confetti fly 
And then Robin Hood had these two starter guys. I forgot their names. And they were like selling flow. So it was like, I remember finding out about flow for the first time and like how they sell for rebates. And it actually, it is useful to know this stuff because the brokers, uh, that's how rebates are get, gotten from the locates and like some broker, you know, we are using DOS Trader with all types of routing that like we can control the the, the flow. And I remember Success Trader came on to the Friendly Bear conference and talked about how like the the flow from success traders, the big uh, exchanges don't like it. They consider it toxic flow because the traders at success trader for the most part are sm smarter than the average investor that's trading on Robinhood or something. That's just like, that's, that's called dumb money, dumb flow. So it's interesting to understand. So yes, yeah, so you, you see how like watching movies helps to get insight for trading. You know what I'm saying? Like you always going to get insight and like, we were just talking before the podcast, um, Kevin, that uh, you got to know who you're up against. And at the time uh, of, of 2021, you had to know who you're up against, you know, and it, how many of them. So, like, I remember talking with my friend Adam in Puerto Rico. Um, he was saying we did a We did a podcast, actually. And we were talking about how, like, uh, like a million sheep can run over a lion. <laughs> I I forgot which stock we oh, he he we were talking about that day. I but mean that's what, what GameStop was. A million sheep running over yeah, a line. I mean, yeah, yeah. So okay, so um, that's my little summary right there. We could talk some more. So so, what is your take on it, Kev? I I like I thought the movie was really cool. It's a little different than I was expecting. Um, it was kind of like a meme movie almost with. All the like the music in it. I think the movie opened up with uh, uh, was that Nicki Minaj WAP. That's right. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> and then I mean, even throughout the movie, there was like little cut cutaways of different memes that were popular back during the squeeze. Yeah, it was I mean, I wasn't trading when all of it happened. Um, I started trading right after that, but I remember seeing all these memes here and there, and that all of it was in the movie. So when did you pretty, start trading? I started trading. Two years ago, so what is it right now? Twenty three. Yep, little little less than two years ago. So after, after, but I wasn't really like paying attention to that kind of stuff yet. I got I was, you. I started as a breakout trader, just buying the break. Buying the break, okay. But you had heard, so you must have gotten influence to start trading or keep your eyes on it because everybody was mentioning it back then. AMC. Yeah. I remember um going to the. This was, is a the same office I had back then. It's the same one. And there's a coffee maker, a, a coffee next to the, what do you call it, the kitchen over there. And like a, some older lawyers would come by and be like, hey, did you see GameStop? You know, hey, David, we heard you're a trader. We're, I'm a trader too. You know, yeah, <laughs> woo, let's make money. And uh, and I didn't have anything that, I had a little laptop at this time and like the walls were bare. So I didn't look like I, I really knew what I was doing to the outsider, even though, you know, so like they didn't know I'm putting in like 20 hours a day into this. But like, were you um, trading GameStop during that? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. I did not. So one thing I, I've always done pretty well up until this year, I broke it, the rule a couple of times or once, actually once that I know very well. We spoke about it before the the podcast, actually, the ICCT, uh, you, you the rule I came up with after that, don't trade what you don't understand. And um, I didn't have that rule clearly defined in 2021, but I didn't know what the hell was going on. I was like, what? Because 2021, when this uh, the meme stocks were going crazy and the meme stocks that I knew right away was AMC and GME. I didn't know BBBY, Bed Bath, and the other ones came afterwards. Express came afterwards. But I had just come uh from making a good you know like trading day in and day out 2020 uh covid market the pandemic market of like biotechs and pharmaceuticals flying it up exponentially and crashing down based on like oh we got rubber gloves rubbing alcohol clorox uh face mask ventilators the car company says hey we're gonna do ventilators you know um i had come from that and that is like you know, you can understand somewhat what's going on, right? But but as far as like GameStop, something that like a gamma squeeze, 
I still I know what a gamma squeeze kind of is more or less, I, but I still fully don't understand it because I don't trade options, you know. Yeah. So, so it's like, how do you fully understand? Like now, I know from watching the movie and from talking about this with other traders at the time in Puerto Rico and stuff. Oh, there's this company, this hedge fund, Melvin Capital. They got two. Um, by the way, I think the movie did a great job with this. Melvin Capital. They got too cocky and too confident. And they overshorted it. The short interest was over a hundred percent. Seth Rogan's scary. He did a great job, yeah. by the way. It was really yeah, sick. Yeah, it was great. So you see him like in his beach house. He's like, "Oh, free money, short more." <laughs> and and uh, and he got what was he's like in his mansion and talking. Yeah, to, he's buying uh, the neighbors. He bought the neighbor's mansion so he could knock it down to put in a tennis court. Yeah, this guy was like, but I, I, I who knows if that's true or not. But um, but it was just like a really. It was a good way to like uh explain how cocky and arrogant and like you know just you know and like, he's just shorting this thing because it, it it doesn't make any sense. It's GameStop. It's, it, we have online video games. It's the pandemic, um, you know. And then he's talking to uh what's his name, the Citadel guy, um, Griffin. At, uh... Ken Griffin. He's calling him up. Point seventy two. Steve Cohen, the guy with the Mets hat. So like you you get to see these characters and by the way, point seventy two, uh, is a hedge fund run by Steve Cohen. That's a billionaire. And today I pointed out, oh yeah, in the chat, like oh Beanox, BNOX, point seventy two has an eight percent stake. I mean it's not that big of a stake, but it is always good to know. Oh, that's a billionaire play. Oh wait, that's the guy from from the game from the the money movie. It's like you put a face to it. That's how you really remember. Um. Just an off topic, but like the other day I was at, um, I went to an event at the athletic club here, which I'm part of is like a social club. And, uh, there was a mentalist performing and this mentalist before the show, he goes and he pretended that he's just like a regular guy. And he, he introduced himself to like here and there to like a hundred people and he got everybody's name. And then, he, then when the show started, he mentioned everybody's name one by one. And it's like, how does he remember this? So he put, I don't know how he did it, but like he put a face to a name or some kind of thing to remember it. And so that's why I think like the movies or like, you know, you see Steve Cohen or Ken Griffin, they talk, this is how you remember things. You internalize Mm -hmm. it. It's like the mentalist did. Cause like how it's not, it's not magic how he remembered everybody's name, a hundred people. And then by the way, he repeated it at the end of the show. He remembered everybody's name. It's like wow. So like yeah, he put, yeah, so he so it's like when you see Steve Cohen there, the character in the dumb money with the Mets hat, you put the face and in the name. Pig. Oh, and the pig. <laughs> you had a pet pig, that's right. Um you oh point seventy two, Steve Cohen. Because like, for example, uh last year I shorted N E R V nerve. And it said point seventy two has a stake. And I was like, ah, oh, point seventy two is whatever. It's some bullshit. And um, this is last year. I, I like I have to, some market experience, but I'm still, you know, I'm still like I don't know everything. And then after, then I, I'm getting squeezed, and I'm like, what the fuck? Why am I getting squeezed in this? And then um, my friend tells me, point seventy two. That Steve Cohen's firm. It's a it's a billionaire play, and they put a big stake. So I was like, oh shit! And I cut the trade for a loss. That was like six k loss. So a six k loss because I didn't know that point seventy two was Steve Cohen because I would never short something i think it's there's easier shorts out there than to short against steve cohen so like just knowing 0.72 and steve cohen alone that can save you money if you're just don't trade this guy but see that's why the movie brings out the character so now you remember it you remember oh that's the guy with the pig telling that just you telling that story right now is gonna help it stick into my head now yes when you you see 0.72 it's like all right man that's steve cohen no, no, don't trade this one. Trade another one. Even though Beanox came came down today, but like, you never know, man. It could keep going. But um, but anyway, yeah. So the movie it had uh, so Melvin Capital. So if you remember, I don't know if you remember, but um, GameStop and AMC were like the short interest was like over a hundred percent or something like that. So because these guys overshorted, and I don't even know how it got over a hundred percent, but you know that's not a that's not good for short selling. So uh, this thing, you know, it's just like it turned into anomaly. I I, I forgot where AMC or GME went. It, it 
uh, do you know like what was the highest it went to? Uh, I think GameStop was four hundred and something, maybe Yeah, four thirty. insane from like two bucks or something, right? Yeah, I think that uh, the main guy was his name uh, Vince or, or Gill or um, the Roaring Kitty guy. Oh like, yeah, he was yeah, in yeah. Like four dollars or something. So Roaring Kitty. Okay, so let's go over this guy. So they brought the character to life in the movie too. So Ro I forgot about him completely because, like, I remember uh, I had. Maya on my podcast. I don't know if you know Maya. She's a long trader. Yeah, just from, just from yeah. watching you. Yeah, so so she was friends with Zach Morris at the time. And she was saying in the podcast, like, Zach Morris brought a lot of volume to AMC. And I remember, yeah, so he did bring a lot of volume to AMC. But then I forgot that Roaring Kitty brought the volume to GameStop. So it's it was like a domino effect of, like, all these pumpers and the Wall Street bets and the crowd. Um, and yeah, yeah. So that's what they made the movie look like. It was all him pumping it up. Like, yeah, so it was kind of what they were things. trying to say. Like towards the end, they're trying to kind of accuse him of that. Yeah. Um. But these were crazy times, man. I remember on Twitter, I would type something on that SLGG stock, for example, and out you could see like live, uh, people responding, "Squeeze you, oh hedgy, I'm gonna get you, hedgy," and like rocket emoji, rocket emoji, rocket emoji. It was just like a different time. And then um, I had Brian Lee on the podcast uh, last year, and we were talking about the phenomena, what's changed last year as opposed to the year before. <clears throat> and he's saying, yeah, a lot of people got bad habits, and those habits have not broken yet Um, at the in 2022. He was saying that um, the whole diamond hands, people were, were they got rewarded for behavior of like uh, bad behavior, okay, like something you shouldn't do that's dangerous. Like you buy a stock and you hold it, you never sell, you never sell for. You remember these characters in the movie? They would buy their Robin Hood, and they said, they said, "Oh, Roaring Kitty didn't sell, so I'm not gonna sell." Uh, and then, and then Roaring Kitty went dark for a bit because like they cut off the internet or something like that. I forgot what they did. Oh, a Wall Street bets. They, they cut they, him off. They cut him off a of Wall Street bets because a congressional hearing or something like that. And then um, they they were saying, oh man, Wall Street did, did Roaring Kitty sell? And then when he got back online, it said, oh, and they sold. So people sold because uh, they couldn't see Roaring Kitty's portfolio on Wall Street bets, and uh, so they sold. They panic sold. And then when when Roaring Kitty came back online and they saw that Still he didn't holding. sell, they bought it back again, <laughs> <laughs> and the stock went higher. And they got then Melvin Capital. This guy is getting squeezed. <laughs> But um, you know, but people, this was, this was true, you know. So people got rewarded for stupidity. So yeah. if you keep the movie's doing this, probably not. It, it's not like good financial advice to watch this movie and think that's no, how you do it. <laughs> no, and those days are gone. So like that market of uh, that was. So people got rewarded for this in that market, but like after that market was done, uh, that those behaviors, most people lost everything. You know, uh -huh. uh, whatever they gained, they lost that and more, which is which is kind of crazy, man. I think they had one example in the movie of like the, the nurse lady. I forgot. Uh, she made like over 100 grand and then like she ended up negative. Yeah. Was then, that when she was talking about it on the plane or? I forgot. I forgot. And then yeah, the, at the, the very end, they show like what each one's net worth was worth. And some yeah. people happened to sell it and some of the other people were still holding it. It's back down to like nothing. Which is it's crazy. So like people, a lot of people had a chance to make a significant money that would like, that would change their lives somewhat, you know, in a positive way, but they didn't take the gains. They thought this would continue forever. I remember um a lawyer lady in this, in this office, she's still here by the way, uh, but she, I don't think she watches the podcast, but like, you know, I won't, I, <laughs> but uh, she remember, I remember her telling me during this time, it's like, yeah, you know, stocks are doing so well. I think I'm going to take out a credit card cash loan and just put it into the stock market or I'll take out a loan and put it stocks are going on. Like I, this is so much better than the interest rate. So like, why would I not do that? Or, you know, so like, this is the way people thought they were getting rewarded for behavior. Like I remember another friend of mine. Um, he's not my friend anymore. I haven't talked to him in a long time uh, over something else, but like, I remember him telling me, yeah, David, I see you're trading, you know? So, 
my strategy, did you buy this stock? Did you buy that? And I was like, no, I don't trade those. Like I short sell this and this, whatever. But he's like, my strategy is never sell for a loss. Never sell for a loss. And I'm like, <laughs> you've got a lot of pennies worth of stock sitting somewhere. Yeah, for, exactly. So that's how, when I heard that, I was like, first of all, he's a diamond hands crowd. But second of all, um, this is like a typical bag holder. So that gave me more conviction actually. Cause like, a lot of bag holders, that's what bag holder charts are. When you have a lot of bag holders in one area, it's because they didn't sell for a loss. And then when the stock comes up, it hits that resistance. Now they get a sell for break even or for a tiny profit a lot of times, or maybe even a small profit, a small loss. But like, that's the bag holder mentality. Never sell for a loss. So like, um, until the pain hits too hard and then they have a chance to sell for small gain or small loss, they'll take it. That's why a lot of these these stocks they hit the certain resistance level and they come back down, but um, but yeah, man, I think that I think the movie did a good job uh explaining the phenomenon. This was like a, a yeah. super crazy year, uh, a, yeah, it was like 2021, 2022 was a different year, um, but yeah, Uber drivers, college students, everybody was just buying stocks on their phone, and the confetti would like. Like you buy a stock, be like a woo, you you bought a stock, and then um, they would bag hold, you know, like uh people would look at Twitter, ins well not Instagram, Twitter, um Wall Street bets, and whatever the crowd was buying, the crowd was buying because like some of this stuff was so ridiculous, like um when I think of that SLGG example, um that gaming company SLGG, people were saying. Wow, Ryan Cohen tweeted the frog emoji and the ice cream emoji, and they came up with this whole thesis of how they're going to acquire SLGG based off of two emojis. And then, then I got sucked. This is how you know I was like a, a newer trader back then. I got sucked into argue. I was like, are you kidding me? That's an emoji. What are you talking about on Twitter? And then like I would get bombarded by like hundreds of people, like no joke. like are, So this was like the crowd at the time, and everybody... Uh -huh was like on their phones i can imagine everybody on their phone yeah, i wish i was around for that part trying to dissect all the little memes yes <laughs> what does so, it really mean yeah i mean it's, that's that's another thing so like when you're prepared with at the right time you know it's you, you you there's a lot of opportunity i know a lot of traders um i mean i did okay and i did pretty well i mean okay i did pretty well in that market but like there's some traders that absolutely were they had years of preparation and this was the this was the moment and they they mm -hmm. made a, a real big amount of money. I think, it, what, what did I make in 2021? I think I made like 200 grand, something like that. Um, 2021. It, but if I would have had... Short, you're, only, you're still only short back then? I, yeah, only short. I was only short. And I was... My whole thing was, I don't want to short what the crowd is shorting. That's what I did. Uh -huh. I think I did that pretty well. And I was shorting only pre-market for like half the year. And then I took my initial... Um, I made a significant amount of money for compared to like out of my first time in my life, I ha I have a significant amount of money. And I, I took, I took a piece of that and I reinvested into uh, my education, which was signing up for a year contract at trade space, moving to Puerto Rico for the incentives over there. And, um, and a lot of my network to this day is mostly just is, everything comes back to Puerto Rico from that time period, you know? So, yeah. and also we were talking about before the podcast, some other experiences, uh, observations I had. So like, um, yeah. So like, I, I did, I think I did the right moves. We were talking about uh, Patrick Bet Davis book that's coming out and also his previous or next five moves. I think that's important. You got to know like, what are your five moves? And I think back then I didn't really know, but I did my five moves pretty correctly. So I can, you know, for that time period, but like, it just goes to show like every, so I always knew like every five to 10 years, we're going to have a big opportunity, you know? So like, what's the next one? They're going to come, you know? So you got to be ready for it. So like, um, yeah, you know, I mean, who knows if it's going to be crazier than 2021 or 2020, but uh, you know, the market always gives you a good opportunity. So like, yeah, you know, so it's just being, being prepared. Cause I, I know if I was, if, if we were both like, 
if this was 2020 just showed up right now oh my god i would it would be it would be crazy you know so yeah so i want to be prepared for the next big one i mean right now with my trading i'm not going big with my trading um i'm just trying to get as good and solid as i can i'm not worried about the money right now i just want to be ready for a big opportunity when it comes yeah and um but you know to to wrap it up okay so most people when they see that movie dumb money i wonder what they think they probably so if they're not a trader i feel like it'd be a completely different movie but i think um, the thing is so what i remember from that time everybody was a trader so i think a lot of people are like oh man i lost some money ah oh, it's like damn i should have kept that they have regret so some people a lot of people have regret thing is most people are quiet about it they don't talk about it anymore so like because i remember going into an uber everybody's talking about stocks i would i, I was uh tutoring a little bit online the students would talk about stocks oh uh, like my mom even mentioned stocks that's what i know it's crazy like my mom even you know so nobody talks about it anymore because there a lot of people like if you made if you made 100k and all of a sudden got wiped out why would you you know it's embarrassing yeah, you don't want to bring it up yeah so i i think there's a lot of that going on and then um I don't think people are thinking to diamond hands anymore. I like when you watch that movie, do you like, uh, um, do you think a, a normal person that doesn't know about socks? Like, Oh man, I got a diamond hands. Let's unite. Let's squeeze the guy. I don't think. Yeah. Doing... In that one, it's, it was, it kind of showed it as like all these regular people, these Reddit people, the dumb money people seeing like an opportunity to try to take out a hedge fund, almost like more important than them making money was their chance to, like screw over one of these rich hedge fund guys like that kind of seemed like that was all their like the little storylines that they followed like the five or four or five different people kind of seemed like that's what they were like trying to show that like they cared more about taking out these rich people and that's why they're showing these rich guys like playing tennis and living it up um but i kind of like that like aspect of the movie yeah that where they like I know there's some Twitter characters that I've ran through, ran across the past couple of years, and they would always communicate that. They never, I mean, at the end, it always ends pretty ugly, man, for most people. <laughs> you yeah. know, that was the yeah, one. I, mean, I feel bad for those people that held it through all that, all the way to the spike, and they got there, and they're still holding it, and then they never ended up selling it. That's, yeah, that's going to haunt them forever. Yeah, so like, we got to stick it to the man, never sell diamond hands. You know, and the man ended up winning, I guess, in the end. In the end, because they they bailed out that guy. Uh, well, they didn't bail him out, yeah. but like his friends lent oh, okay. they lent him money on interest because they're all in the same industry. Steve Cohen, uh, what's the other guy, Ken Griffin, but um, but yeah, you know, so like I do remember like people calling themselves apes. Hey, apes, apes unite, or like you know, hey, retard, hey, like I I knew that was not gonna end well because like. You know, when you're depending on the crowd, like uh, it's not like it's it's just not a good thing. Like you know, it's like the yeah, fall. I was of the hearing crowd. apes when I started trading. Apes was something I was seeing. I I didn't understand it. I mean, over time, I slowly started to understand what was going on with, with just calling themselves apes. But after or, seeing the movie, it made a little bit more sense. And, and uh, I do remember the tendies. I remember seeing say, "Oh, tendies." So see, like people are re they repeat things that they don't even know what it means so like now i know what it uh, means like tendies came from a uh, roaring kitty cat guy he liked chicken tenders or something so uh -huh. and he looked at the price when it was at ten dollars oh he that's what it was yeah yeah i got you but like he the whole internet was saying for tendies ape retard diamond hands i like uh, you, you know something funny my brother pointed out to me i went and saw that with my brother um who was the guy pete uh Pete Davidson, yeah, yeah, his yeah. brother in the movie. At the very beginning, um, when uh, Rory Kitty was like turned his stream on, he was reading the chats, and everyone's like talking shit to him. And there's one guy, his name, the screen name is like Balls, and he just calls him, he just calls uh, Rory Kitty a retard. And Rory Kitty's like, okay, that's not nice. And then later on in the movie, they're in the back of the car, and uh, Rory Kitty looks over at him on his phone, and he realizes that his brother was Balls the whole time. <laughs> I don't know if you caught that. that I didn't. Funny. I didn't catch that. No, I didn't catch that. No, my, my brother pointed sense, that out so. to me in the theater. I started laughing out loud. It makes sense now. Yeah, now it makes total sense. 
But yeah, he man. Was a, he was a cool character. Uh, the brother. I've never seen Pete Davidson in a movie, but he was pretty good in this one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I didn't even realize that was Pete Davidson's until you mentioned it. Yeah. So that was Pete Davidson's. So they have a good cast over here. That, uh, yeah. There was a lot of people I recognized. I don't know most of their names, but there's yeah. a lot of like famous actors I noticed. I did that. recognize a lot of them too. Yeah. Yeah. And it was cool too that they also used like real footage from like the congressional hearing they showed. It was actually uh, yeah, like AOC and all that. and AOC, but then they would show them talking to the act, like the actor instead. That, that's another thing, man. So like Maxine Waters doesn't know, like she's in charge of the finance committee. She doesn't know anything yeah. about this stuff. No, none they, of them know anything about what they were talking about. AOC, the same thing, you know, it's just ridiculous. I, I remember that, brought, like that was the time. And it was all virtual. That's right. It was it was virtual because yeah. the pandemic. They kind of showed how it was all happening during COVID too. That was a cool side of the story too, because you almost yeah. forget that how big of a deal that was at the time. That's crazy, man. That was only that was three years ago, man. Only three years yeah. ago. All right, criminal. Um. So yeah, that was that was good. We're gonna do more of these movie reviews. I think the next one is on Saturday. Uh, I mentioned in the chat a couple some of the guys. Um, what's the movie? Wolf of Wall Street to do it's a good movie a lot of lessons there too yeah all right criminal well i'll see you later and that concludes today's movie review see you guys cool. see, ya. see you man bye